does not, therefore, depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy and he hardens whom he wants to harden. One of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us? For who is able to resist his will? But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for special purposes and some for common use? What if God, although cho choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the objects of his wrath prepared for destruction? What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy whom he prepared in advance for his glory? even us, whom he also called, not only from the Jews, but also from the Gentiles. It says, it, it, starting in verse 16, it does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. Meaning, there is nothing about you that can come to God and choose. God has to choose you. It says in verse 18, therefore God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. When Christians talk about you have a hardened heart against God, the Bible says that God's the one that hardened it. And then it, it, it even goes on to ask, well, then why does God still blame us? You know, if, if he created this way, how come he blames us? And Paul is saying, who are you to question God? How can the clay question the potter and ask, why have you made me like this? It says, what if God, although choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the objects of his wrath prepared for destruction? If he has decided he wants to create you just to destroy you, then he's going to do that. And that's his right. You don't get to question that. And realizing this changed everything about my perspective of God. Realizing this made me see a God who did not desire people to be saved, but instead creates people as puppets, does what he wants with them, and then tells them you're not allowed to question it. That is just in direct contradiction to any kind of a loving, kind um, Father God that I was taught growing up in the church. So I was fed one version of God who was a loving Father, but I'm learning about this completely different God um, who intentionally creates people to go to hell. That right, who intentionally creates people to go to hell. That right there really shattered my perception of God. It really caused me to start this journey of of questioning what I believed and why I believed it. The second passage that the second passage that really caused me to question the Bible was Psalm 137.9. And you've probably heard it. It's a popular one that is used within the deconstruction community to really talk about these atrocities in the Bible. And it says this, happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. Now, it is really important to understand the context of this verse. This is what's known as an imprecatory prayer. Um, it is praying evil against your enemies. It is a lamentation. It is an expression of grief. Basically, what this psalmist is writing is uh, about how they were treated so badly by their enemies, and so they want to repay them for what they've done. Justified by Christians in this way. You know, well, they were just expressing themselves. They weren't actually bashing babies into rocks. They just you know, wanted justice. They wanted revenge. But my problem with that is that this is supposed to be the inspired word of God. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone. Salute and honors to your other brethren. Shalom to the hopefully elect. Peace. I want to go into this video here with this looks like to be white woman right I may title it that but um, you know some of our people may look so-called white so I'll say that but she seems to be a Christian that has lost her faith as she said she said she had faith when really she never really truly had the faith obviously and this is why men are set up and this is why the scripture says, O ye men, I call. Okay? The flock, of, I, believe, I believe Ezekiel 34, the flock of my pastor of men. Right? And they know this. And this is why 
they set the standard even in sports and everything else for certain men to lead, especially when it comes to um, the church, to lead and teach prosperity and make them feel good. And this is where it becomes easy for them. But now when she reads and she sees the truth, then you can start understanding that, no, the slavery that happened on these so-called blacks and Native Americans coming on these slave ships was an act of God, right? Just as a tornado is considered an act of God, the act of Yahweh, right? These are acts of the Most High. In fact, we're going to prove that right now. We're going to go through, hit up quite a few scriptures. Proverbs 20, 24, man's goings are the Lord, right? Of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? This is what they can't get. And this is what's screwing over a lot of Christians because now they're starting to see that the God of Israel, if you watch that movie, The Mist, that woman that was in there, she was saying it, that the Most High requires blood. We've seen this with Jephthah and his daughter when he sacrificed the, whoever comes through next. And he, I believe he thought it was one of his maid servants or something was going to come through and it was his own daughter and she had to be sacrificed by fire because he made an oath with the heavenly father and this was like a mighty man that was kicked out and they asked him to come back that's that's in the stories but the point is who hardened pharaoh's heart the heavenly father hardened his heart so you Start understanding that you are on a puppet string. And when you lose your faith, you never had the faith. And the Lord took whatever you had away. Right? But that's all. She's exposing Christianity. Because that's what plantation Christianity, uh, Christian plantationism, as I call it, what it does for you. Meanwhile, while treaties were being broken, meanwhile we're being destroyed, slave ships coming back and forth, and these people had set up black leaders and black puppets to teach our people prosperity. Even in the time of slavery. When they converted Negroes to slavery. That's another video. Some didn't want to. Some of them did. That's why they was burning down those churches. You had a group of so-called whites that didn't accept so-called blacks converting to Christianity. You had other whites who converted to, to so-called blacks because they figured they would make better slaves because the Bible made them docile. It was their book, but let's teach them how to read it another way. And through universalism, the Jew and the Gentile, right? It worked. She couldn't understand the book of Psalms. Happy shall I be when I dash the little ones against the stones. Christians do make excuses for that. Well, it was the old times. Well, Malachi 3 and 6 says the Lord change if not. Let's go to uh, Psalms 47 and 2. For the Lord most high is terrible. I guarantee you the Christians cannot explain this scripture. For the Lord most high is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. You know, the Christians can't explain that. And that word terrible means feared. So all these things that are happening... Is happening because the Lord set these things up to happen. Deuteronomy 28 64, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from one end of the earth even to the other, talking about the Israelites, and there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Right? And it says, verse 48, now this is the Lord doing this. I'm going to just get to the point. He, uh, thou shalt serve thy enemies. Right, and it says, and in one of all things that he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So you're starting to see, once you read the Bible, what's happening with this woman, if the Bible was taught to her the right way, she would never have got it unless the spirit of the Lord accepted her seeing the truth. Right? But we're reading these scriptures, which there was situations, well, I believe Eusebius, and certain ones that actually took the Old Testament out. Right? Because they did not want the, um, 
They wanted the, the smooth words. But we're finding out in the Old Testament and the New Testament, Paul and Yahweh, the one you call Jesus, was saying the same things that were pretty much written in the Old Testament. Right? But they used the smooth words and then they set up certain pastors to teach it. And this is why when you went to church, they might even have a couple of Bibles sitting there for you. And they'll, op they'll say, open up to page such and such. But forget all the, the horrible stuff God wants us to love. Let's go to Job 34, 29. When he giveth quietness, when he giveth quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hide of his face, who then can behold him? Whether it be done against a nation or against a man only. And the Most High is a terrible feared king over all the earth. You know, you can't get around that. And the way Christianity was taught, you know, the scriptures also say the Lord is a man of war. He is a man of war. So through all the feminism and, you know, everything else that was pushed, uh, especially New Age Christianity, she couldn't understand, well, wait, wait a minute, why did Apostle Paul says, let your woman keep solace in the churches, as also say of the law, meaning nothing new, right? In the book of Numbers, the book of Deuteronomy speaks of this. So they're starting to see the realness of, of the Bible, and they can't handle it. And this is why the Christian church is folding. They see in the way this Bible is taught to us is not actual reality of what the Lord sees and does. Now, even in Romans 9, 11, I believe 13, he said, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and on compassion on whom I have compassion. The Most High sent his own son to die. You know, now this kind of power is a feared power for the nation of Israel, of course. 1 Samuel 2 and 6. The Lord killeth and maketh of love. This is a prayer of Hannah. And he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust. You remember that movie Trading Places? How they took um, Eddie Murphy and they switched him and made him rich? Well, if that was a real life reality, the Lord would have done that. And he lifted up the beggar from the dunghill and set them on among princes. And to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he have set the world upon them. Right. So the Lord punished us and he caused us to go off. Why? Because what would happen if we was in the kingdom now? Would we really appreciate it? No, I doubt it. But to know what we've been through, the Lord is a perfect balance and power. For all the hell we caught through all these generations, he's going to give us the, the gift of glory. And that's the kingdom of heaven. You know? The Lord is going to give it to the, uh, us. It says, he will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be solid in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. And we know what the suit of saints are in Psalms 148. Right? So this is where the Christians are having a problem. Well, wait a minute. The Lord is not like that. It's got to, it just can't be one particular people. Well, Amos 3 and 1 says different. Romans 9 says different. But this is what they're pushing. The Christianity, Christian church. It's We've been programmed, re, replaced with new theology, or not even replaced. We were born into this Santa Claus, white man with a beard and red and white, coming around like a overgrown Roman Catholic, giving you gifts, and gifts and toys because you were a good boy. You know what that does to your mind? And then they gave you the picture of a white man. <laughs> so you know what that does to your mind? No wonder we have so much self hatred. Anyway, let's get to the nitty gritty. Uh, Romans 13 and 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For is there no power but of Yahweh and powers. 
God and the powers that be are ordained in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Right? So the Most High, His Son, right? Um, the kingdom of heaven set up under the house of David, the Israelites, starting with the elect. And the Lord set up a governing authority and powers of the earth. You can't get around that. And this is what people can't see. Isaiah 55 and 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto him unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon the Israelites. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, right? Because everything comes down, but it don't go back. But watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth the bud, that is... Uh, that may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word that be go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. See, you have to understand, Jeremiah 28 and, 20, uh, 28 and 8 speaks of the prophets that prophesied against uh, countries and kingdoms. Well, guess what? The Lord created the heathen. And you can read this in Deuteronomy 14, I believe. Uh, in various others, he created the heathen to be who he is. He created his special people, as Deuteronomy 7 and 6 says. So at the end of the day, your thoughts are not his thoughts. You can't say, well, why would God do this? Why is this, why is thus happening to me? He made you to be a man or he made you to be a woman. He made you to be an Israelite or he made you to be a non-Israelite. Period. That's it. And there's different classes and stages of heathens, right? Or different levels of how they operate today. It's just what it is. It's the governing authorities. Here's one crucial scripture. Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, right? This is when he said, I have mercy on who I have mercy. Romans 9, 13. And will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Now we know these strangers will be Israelites cleaving to the house of Jacob. And any of you who think otherwise is on a false doctrine. And let's say the strangers were the other nations trying to cleave to the house of Jacob. The only thing they're going to have to do, we're going to show you. <clears throat> which we notice the Israelites and the people shall take them and bring them to their place and a house of Israel shall possess them and the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids and take them captives right whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors so we see this through the scriptures the holy one of Israel Psalm 47 and 2 this is what he's about Prepare slaughter, verse 21, prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor pres uh, possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. We see this in Malachi 1. You know, they return to build the destined places. They shall build, but I will throw down. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, the remnant and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. I will I will also make it a possession of to the uh, bitten bitter so like it, the bittern and pools of water. And I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, right? Let me see what this say. The besom of destruction. So guess what? We see this in Revelation 18. Double unto her according to her works, and a cup she have filled. Filled to her double, I believe, Revelation 18 and 6. This is a Middle Eastern word, one made of twigs, <laughs> like a broom. That's, that's what it says. It's good I read that. I will sweep it with a uh, besom 
Well, this is where you get the word bristles. Of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. So we understand that the Bible as you knew it is not what you thought. And a lot of you Christians are going to start seeing this. And then you, you're going to start recognizing that the Israelites, there's a lot of truth. Right? And we believe we have the 100% truth. That's all I have on that, Shalom.